In this tutorial, I want to show you the Google Content Translation filters and how they can be used to translate between uh, languages. So in my example, from English to French. The reason I'm putting this down as a recording is the documentation here is very, very sparse. And there was a lot of trial and error on my behalf to get it to work. And therefore, I thought, well, I'll capture that for the benefit of others. So let's start with what this, this problem we're trying to solve. If we go to this course here, uh, this will soon be delivered into um, French-speaking African countries. And so we need a ready mechanism to uh, automatically translate the content within this course, but also in a future-proofing way, any new content that is added and indeed any conversations that might occur between the student and the teacher. So it's a big proposition. Uh, now, what this plugin will do once you can get it to work is it accepts the natural language of the user, in this case, English. And so at the moment, everything is being displayed in English. But if I switch this to French, all of a sudden, the exact same content now appears to the end user in their native language, in this case, French. What in essence has happened in the background is that the, the uh, translation filter plugin has taken all of the content, passed it to Google Translate, and is storing the translated version of that same content back in the Moodle database, which is actually quite smart. And let me uh, talk you through it. So now that I've got this working, you'll notice there's a new interface for me. It's very subtle, and it's this interface here. In essence, what has happened is that the, um, the, the Google Translation en engine has sent back translated versions of everything on screen. And there is a, a feature, an interface that allows someone who might be bilingual to make any subtle corrections to that translated content. So here's the original English version. Here's the automated Google Translate version. And if there was any subtle corrections that needed to happen, then the translator could go in here, make those corrections and store them separately in the database. This time, next time this page is rendered by someone who has the natural language of French, they will get the improved or enhanced version of exactly the same content. So the, the things which really pleasantly surprised me about this uh, is that it actually reads into all of the Moodle interfaces, including into, into some surprising areas, such as the discussions area. So for instance, if I go into this introduce yourself discussion, you'll see that these items have also been translated, including any uh, commitments from students. Now there are things, and you've probably noticed them already, that haven't been translated. It turns out that the titles of the items, so in this case, the title of the discussion forum, doesn't appear to be translated by the engine. Now whether that's a limitation, whether I haven't configured it correctly, or you know a future enhancement. But if you think about the volume of work, the great majority of the content is on the words on the screen, the words in your books, etc. So if it is that you need a, a translator to just go through and change the titles, then I think that's a pretty good position to find yourself in. So that's the end product. And if people are just interested in what the finished product uh, looks like, then you should stop watching now. But the real magic was in how to get this configured. Because if I, we look to the plugins, and there are actually two of them, there's the constant translation filter and the content translation manager. There is virtually no documentation. There's also no comments. There's very little in the um, GitHub repos. There's almost nothing to go on. And so you're left to kind of wander your way through in the setup and configuration process. So here are the things which proved to be successful for me. Um, and I've made a few faux pas before I, I found the magic recipe. So the first things to note is that you'll need obviously uh, an instance of Moodle. You'll need to have the two plugins installed in that instance. I won't cover that in this recording. And you'll also need to get an API key for the Google Translation API engine. And I'll, I'll show you parts, but not all of that process in this recording. So let me start the, the Moodle setup piece. Uh, the first thing to note is you really need to start to enable multi-language support. Oh, <laughs> I've realized now as I drill into here, I'm still in, in French speaking language, including 
you'll notice I've got the French language pack. The French language pack is actually important to all of this. So I'm going to go back to English. And in fact, that's the first piece of work. If you haven't already done so, you're going to need to add any language packs that you want this translation engine to work with, because it will only start the translation once one user, any user, toggles into that foreign language. Uh, so let me go and show you the, the setup of that first piece. So I've always got to remember where some of these things are. Give me a sec. Um, under language, we've got a couple of areas here. We'll go into language settings, default language English, obviously. Uh, everything else I think I leave the same there. I, I just feel like those are default. Uh, so, but the uh, one thing that you will need to do is to add whichever language packs you want to be part of your translation. So I've added um, the French one. I've also added a, a, a variant of that. I don't know whether I need that, uh, but I've included it as well. So that's just a matter of choosing from the language packs that you want, migrating them over to here. Now that I've done that, that is in essence facilitated this, facilitated the option for people to choose their language. So that's kind of the pre-preparation before you even get to the plugins. And the plugins are curious because the plugin, the primary plugin is actually a filter. It's a filter in sort of the same way as a glossary tool is a filter. It actually live reads all of the page content and makes uh, it does work against those pages. And so we go into the plugins area. Uh, do, 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 plugins. Go into the filters. Manage filters. And you'll need to now enable, turn on the content translation filter. That's good. Um, it, this also leads us to a settings area. And this is where the, the hard bit happens, really. So uh, I needed to get a, a Google Translate API key. I'll show you the steps I took for that. Um, this, I, it turns out I needed to tick. It wasn't quite clear either way. I, I did show the strings in the footer initially, but I've, I've gone on to turn that off. I think that, some, that just created a complication for me that wasn't necessary. But then, the next piece of this puzzle is where do you get the, the API key from? So in order to do that, you need to go to uh, Google's uh, cloud translation service. So cloud.google.com slash translate. Uh, it is the tool that Google itself uses for any of its natural language translation, but you, you can use it yourself. And there is a getting started for free option, which is what I've used in this recording. So um, I've, I chose the get started for free option. So when you've come to this, which is talking about translation service, before I had actually done the setup, there's a button here, which read something like um, get started or get st test for free or words to that effect. Now, now that I've set that up, it doesn't say that anymore, but uh, it allows me to go to my console. And this is for the people that don't do any work with with Google APIs, and I'd only do very little of it. This screen itself can become very, very confusing. You don't really know where to go. There's no obvious options in the menus here, and there's so many menus that it's very hard to find things anyway. However, if you search up here for translate, you are taken to the area that's important, which is this one here, Google Translation API. Now, I've already set this up, which is why it says manage now and it says API enabled. But the, uh, the first thing you'll need to do is go through, try this API, and that will guide you through a whole lot of questions, setup and configuration. And that process itself probably take, will take you a good five to 10 minutes. Once you've done that, you'll hopefully arrive back to your console, uh, which it looks like this and, and make sure, and this is a bit that I, I got wrong the first time, that I'm in the right container, that I'm in the cloud translation API container. And then go to the credentials area. And here, if you'll need to create for yourself an, uh, a credential, an API. 
So you hit create credential and just follow the on-screen instructions for there. That will give you your API key that you need to give back to the Moodle interface. So just uh, uh, pause at this point. I'm using their free service. It gives me a 30-day trial. So at the end of 30 days, this key will expire and anything past that 30-day trial would, would come at a cost. So you need to be prepared. This is a pay-per-use service uh, and, and sort of budget and plan for that. All right, now that I have that, <coughs> I can return to here, paste in my key, save the changes, and hopefully that will be it for you. I had to do, I, I had to repeat that process several times to get it right. That was probably just because I cocked something up in my first two or three attempts. So hopefully you have a better experience on your first try than I did, but this has taken me some hours to get right. All right, so now that I've got that, I can go to um, back into any course. And so let me show you that. It, uh, if I go into any course at all, bear with, this is on our, our test server, so it's a bit slower than production. Let's say it's this course here. So at the moment, this is all in English, um, but the idea with this is that as soon as you have the first person uh, access this in a foreign language, like French, it will commence the process of uh, sending that text to the Google API, converting it, and then storing the converted content back. You'll notice, in fact, that it's taken quite a lot, long time for me to render this the first time. And it... it rem Remember that cautionary tale I was saying before, it doesn't actually change the title. So it's not entirely clear yet that it's done anything useful. But let me drill down to the next interface. And now you can see that it's actually translated the content as we expected it to. And the, the clever thing here is that because any user has rendered this content, it's actually storing the, the cached uh, translation into the Moodle database. And therefore it allows us to do that process I was talking about before, which is to have someone who might be a, a, a translator, um, who, who's native in both languages, go through and make subtle corrections to the translated version. So the only thing to think about then is in order to make sure that you get a good speed to action in terms of the student experience, it would probably be sensible to click through every page within your course to make sure that all of the translations have occurred and are being stored. You can see as I'm clicking here, there really is no lag. It's happening remarkably quickly. Uh, but I think it's probably good practice to go through and do that preparative work. And you need to also recognize the limitations of this. So of course it will translate the content that it can, anything that's on screen, but here we have a video. It's not, of course, going to translate the audio that's in that video. That's a step too far. However, we know services like Moodle, at least, um, often do have uh, their videos translated into multiple languages. So if you're lucky, you might find that that's all, that work's already been done for you. So that's it.